Hey everybody, I'm gonna walk you through about next week what you're responsible for. We're gonna be taking a test. And in a second, I'm gonna tell you the most important thing with the test, but before I do it, I'm gonna tell you the things I've been forgetting that I've been getting a lot of questions about. First, attendance. When you first log into Schoology, right here is the folder, you click that, and your links will be there. Right now, I just uploaded the new link that's gonna be for attendance for seven, which is Tuesday. If you click it, I know what it's gonna say if you do this today, which is Friday, it's gonna say it's not accepting responses. But that's because today, you get credit for today, Friday. Starting tomorrow, you can get credit for Tuesday. So that will not be available until Saturday, of April the 4th. So if you try to do that on the Friday, it will not work. But starting then, you can take this for your attendance. All right, make this one is active for today. Take your attendance. Secondly, a lot of students have been saying Schoology's been down. I've been running into that as well. It's been frustrating. So because of that, I started playing around well with different ideas without having to get too crazy. If you go to your 365, Office 365, this is the Outlook and Teams. All right, so this is the same thing we've been doing um, for like meetings and stuff like that. When you log in to your Office 365, we've been I've been telling you you need to go start going to Outlook for email. Uh, what I want to show you is I've created a class notebook as well. So we also did Teams on here. If you go to class notebook, which should be available on yours, I've done this as a uh, backup. Where is my pre-cal? Manage notebooks. There you go. When you click on this, I don't know what yours is going to look like exactly, but the one I'm looking for is this pre-cal. How about open notebook? Will it open for me? Yeah, here we go. When this opens up, you see your name should be on there. If I scroll down, somewhere in here is your name. There's 198 of them. One of them should be yours. Up at this top is content library. In case any, like Schoology is not working out, you click that. It should be there. I don't know why it's not. I'll have to play around some more. But I have loaded those things. Maybe it's that other pre-calculus I got to click on. Uh, maybe I clicked on the wrong one. But there should be one. When you log in, we'll figure that out. But I have all the content li listed there in case Schoology is down. I'll keep playing around with that to make that effective. That was the third thing, uh, or second thing. So attendance, and if Schoology is not working, go to your class notebook, and we'll figure out which one it is. Uh, I'll probably just click the wrong one. When I went to um, this, should have just clicked the top, probably. Let's see, I'm gonna try one more time. And moment of truth, yep, here it is. There's your attendance, chapter seven, uh, resources, I got Desmos and all that. Which brings me to the third thing. You are taking a test starting next week. It's gonna be open anytime you can take it from Monday through Thursday. What I recommend for you are, is this. Use your Desmos resources. If you go here, these Desmos pre-programmed graphs. Some of you are probably rolling your eyes, but I'm telling you, I have made the test. It's a new test for this year. I've never used it before. And I made it to where you can get every single answer off of Desmos. So if you use Desmos, you should be able to get your answers. I know I haven't been there to walk you through the algebra, so since we've been doing digital, I thought I'd give you a test so you can get all your answers digitally. We don't have a paper review to hand out, so you might be thinking, well, what type of questions might they be? They're questions like this. If I give you a Desmos or an equation that's in general form, like this. That means it's uh, not in the parentheses with the x and all that. This is general form. If I give you some equation like and that's in this type of form, you'll find the right numbers here. And the questions are going to be something like, where is the focus located? And so if this were the exact equation, that I have a 1 there in front of the x squared, I have 0 xy's, I have a negative 4 y squared, and you've had these values. And I ask you, where is the focus or the foci? What you would do is you need to know the foci are the purple points here. That's the reflective point if you watch the videos. These would be the two answers you'd be looking for. If I ask what are the vertices, these red points would be referring to the vertices. And if I ask for what's the center, that blue point right there would refer to the center. Now not every question is going to be in this form. Sometimes I'm going to give you questions that are in standard form. So if it was in standard form, 
it would be a type of form that looks like this. Again, you put your values in correctly. I might ask you, what's the major axis length? Now the major axis would be the longer axis. You can come down here and you go to major and it tells you the major axis would be 18. Again, if it asks for foci or focus, what are the two focus? Foci is just plural for focus. It's kind of like cactus and cacti. Uh, these would be the two foci. If it wanted co-vertices, that means the shorter vertices, the vertices that are on the minor axis, you'd have these two points. If they wanted the uh, vertices, that's the ones on the major axis. It would be these two points. So again, everything you can get with Desmos, it's all about understanding. It basically becomes a vocabulary test. Can you, when you look at the problem, put in the values right and then go to the vo correct vocabulary? If I ask for foci, you just need to know those are this, these points. If it asks for the center, you need to know it is that point right there. If you if it's the vertices, the co-vertices, these two vertices here. And again, that just depends on which one's longer and shorter. So as the equation changes, these now are no longer the, the vertices. They've become the co-vertices because these two are shorter. They're closer to the center than are these two points. And so it just becomes a vocabulary test using technology. If you can do that, you'll make a 100 on the test. Uh, I might have one little trick in there to make sure to separate, I guess, to make 90s and 100s a little bit separate where you might have to do one by hand. Not might, you will. But the other questions, they're going to be in that form. Except for, finally, uh, let me go to our YouTube video. You need to be familiar with, it's in 7.1, You need to be familiar with these different shapes with intersections right here. The last video in the 7-1 playlist. If you watch this, you need to be familiar with what shape is created when you cut a, a double nap cone in different ways. Now, I can't write on the computer I have here, but if I could, I would draw an X for like a double nap cone and then uh, intersect it different ways. If I start showing this video, I think I actually start doing that. You see there's the X, there's the circles. That's a double nap cone. It's like a cone stacked on top of itself. And let's talk about what happens if you get intersected by different ways. So this one right here, I intersected it parallel to the slant. That says parallel to the slant. And so it's talking about if you did it parallel to the slant, what shape would be made if you, like if this were a paper cone and you cut that what shape would be created there? And I'm about to tell you, it's gonna be a parabola. When I get there, you'll see that's how it would look if you cut it out. And if you don't like this, you can go see the pictures back over here in this pre-calculus. Remember I showed you this, this is Office 365. I chose class notebook. If you go over here and you go to chapter seven in your content library and you go to parabolas, I have all of this loaded in here. Once it loads, here it comes. These pictures are right here. You can see parallel to the slant makes a parabola. Parallel, this is parallel to the base, makes a circle. This one here is perpendicular to the slant. That's an ellipse. And this is perpendicular to the base, hyperbola. If you watch the videos, you should hear that as well. So again, be familiar with that. It's basically, uh, like I said, vocabulary. Parallel to the slant, parallel to the base, perpendicular to the slant, perpendicular to the base, hyperbola, ellipse, circle, parabola. So anyways, if you want to make a 90 plus, know your vocabulary. If you want to make 100, you got to know a little bit of the, the math behind it, but still use those Desmos. Uh, I don't have any problem with you using Desmos in the test. That's what I've created for you. You will find this test when you go to pre-calculus, Chapter 7, this test is going to be located right there in the common assessment. And that's for next week, and that will become available to you um, starting Monday, I believe. And so there it is. There's your links. That's, if you have any questions, uh, get back at me.